Welcome, everybody, to a new episode of Daydream Legend Podcast. I was about to say what number it was, but I don't remember. It may be nine. I think it's nine, but it may be ten. It may be eight. I don't know. Didn't do a lot of pre-planning uh, when it comes to that. But welcome back to uh, all the old listeners. Uh, welcome any new listeners. I appreciate you checking it out. Um, yes, this is still early in the podcast. We're figuring it out, but I got some messages from people that said they like what I'm doing. My audience is small, but it's mighty and it's supportive. And that's all I can ask for. We're just building. You know what? We're just doing this to pass the time and maybe come up with some fun ideas or some fun content for the social media. Cause that's what it's all about today. Content. So if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel, hit the thumb up button, hit the little bell thing to be notified when I upload a new video. I upload stand up to my uh, YouTube channel. I have the web series. I don't know Joe there. You can watch um, all types of sketches that I've done over the years. I have some new sketches I'm going to be doing hopefully by the end of the year. And if you're listening on uh, the audio, go over to YouTube, do that. But if you're on YouTube, go over to my audio, go to like whatever podcasting app you use and subscribe there because uh, those download numbers really help me like progress. And if you could, if you have the time, I know I'm asking you to do a lot, go to iTunes and rate and review the show or rate and review it on whatever platform you listen on. Um, you can ask me any questions. That I could be that I can answer on the podcast on the following podcast in the comment section if you'd like, or you can call the Google voice number that I have 973-908-8477. People leave me messages or send me text messages asking me anything. Uh, usually it's like a would you rather, you know, we try to keep it light. I don't like to do politics on here. Um, it's just who because who cares, right? I mean, nobody cares my thoughts on politics. I mean, if I have to, if I want to, maybe I will, but I probably, I'm trying to never do that if I can humanly, the sentence is falling apart. If I could, I was about to say if I can humanly possibly not, but that, (laughs) that sounds like I just had a stroke. So you know what I'm trying to say? I'm going to try not to do it. Um, Luckily I have our trusty listener, Robin, who sends me voicemails every week. I appreciate her. I do. I, I I really think I just may have to just make her a part of this podcast because she's the number one supporter in giving me content. So shout out to Robin. We do have some messages from her that's going to be coming up. And uh, and that's that. Um, This past weekend, I had a couple of shows that were, um, let's say, uh, poorly attended. Um, but it was the first time this venue was doing it. It was a pretty cool venue. It's called Factory Records. And um. They have this, it's in Dover, New Jersey, and they have this really, it's a really cool record store. If you're into vinyl, um, this is an awesome place to go, and they have a really cool showroom on the side. I only got booked for this a few weeks ago, so there wasn't a lot of time to promote it for them. Uh, We had very small audiences, so it was like a lot of crowd work and a lot of uh, trying new stuff because, I don't know, when you have a small audience, you just, you don't want, it's like you're not going to do your I mean, you do, you try and do good, but you try to like mess around a little more than normal because, you know, it's just the way it is. And we did have fun. It was some second show was very drunk. First show, we had a lot of older people and they were good. Second show, very drunk. And the owner's daughter was there extremely drunk walking in and out. And I think she said during the show that she may start going to AA. So we were all kind of proud of her as a. As a crowd, see, I got, I, I've been drinking uh, the Zevia. I gotta stop drinking carbonated beverages, even though it's delicious. This is a new flavor, Cran Raspberry. They should sponsor me because I support them highly. But I, I should stop drinking carbonated beverages in a show because I keep wanting to burp every once in a while. But it's the only drink I have now, so get ready for some burping. But anyway, this this girl, this drunk girl, um, you know, you can't go hard at the owner's daughter, even though he was laughing when we were kind of making fun of her. But you're like, I'd like to get booked back here again because there's a cool room. Guy said he liked me. He, he apologized for not having a uh, a bigger crowd. Um, But he said he will have me back. He really liked my stuff. And he gave me a charcuterie board. He gave the comics a charcuterie board. And um, 
that that means a lot to me. That I mean, when you can really have some cheeses and meats. And uh, what I thought was olives, there was like a little a little thing in the middle with uh, it looked like Kalamata olives, but it was actually raisinets, which is way better, way better. So cheese, meat and raisinets, you won me over. So go support them. Factory Records, Dover, New Jersey. I think they're going to try and do other comedy shows there to do music there. And um, I really like the guys that run it. And um, if I can get an earlier booking next time, we can really push it and try and get people out there. My neighbor, one of my neighbors came with a a friend of hers. And uh, isn't that just the way it is? It's like I perform all the time. And a lot of the clubs and places I perform have a a nice size audiences. Why do people I know like to choose to come see me on the the nights where just like this is the first time they're doing a show. uh, They didn't promote it well. So I was like, I told her, I'm like, we could have done this. We could have invited the other six people. I think there was, I think that first show had a total of 10 people. I'm like, we, and it's a hacky thing to say. People say it all the time, but we really could have done it in my backyard behind by my fire pit. So, um, anyway, I have uh, more shows coming up. Go to joefernandez.net. The bookings are starting to come in, especially for next year. I'm very excited. I'm just, it's always a good feeling. It always feels good to fill the calendar. Damn, my mouth is not working today. Holy shit. Anyway. That drunk girl at the show, her boyfriend or husband or whatever, I don't even know how it came about. I was going to play some audio, but my phone didn't record the audio that good, so it just sounds kind of marbled. Somehow we got on the topic of bidets, and uh, I've been trying, people have been trying to sell me on bidets for a long time, and uh, I always think about it, but then it kind of... I. We have to break this down. It, it's kind of disgusting in a way, like where I think I'd like it. Like the guy's like, dude, it'll change your life. It will change your life. The bidet will change your life. I'm like, I know. I have no doubt in my mind that shooting warm water into my butt will change my life for the better because I know me and I know I like that or I think I like that. No, I know I like that. Anyway, where I have hesitation is that if I have a bidet, I want my own. I don't want to share it. I don't want to share it with anybody. I can't, I can't have sh- like friends come to the house and shoot my warm water into their butt. Isn't there going to be any lingering, you know, you know, like lingering particles from their butt shooting possibly into mine and give me some sort of weird like ass bacteria or like growing, like, I don't know, like some sort of skin eating disease. I don't know what, I mean, all I got to believe that whatever is growing in shit can't be good. It can't be good. And the guy's like, nah, dude, it's totally sanitary. Okay. All right. Oh, well, that, that settles it. The, the drunk guy and his wife told me in the back of a record store that it's sanitary. So it must be. It must be sanitary. I just don't know how it could be sanitary. My whole thing is it can't be sanitary because you'd see them in public bathrooms, right? Like if it was really sanitary, like wouldn't every public bathroom have it? It's green because you're not uh, using uh, paper anymore. So why don't we just have uh, jets shooting the the buttholes of strangers? Because it's probably gross. It, It has to be gross. That can't be healthy. It can't be. And that's the negative of it. That's why I don't believe that it is, but I do want my personal one. I think, see, I have to investigate it more, but I wonder if, if you can control the temperature, if you can have pulsing, like, if, is, is it just one stream? Can you, can you, you know, make the power less, make the power more? Can you pulsate it? Could you throb it? Could you see, this is why a bidet would be bad for me because I already spend a lot of time in the bathroom, like on my phone. Um, I feel like the bidet would keep me in there just a little too long. Um, Let me know your thoughts on bidets. I I just need to know, is it gross? Is it just me? Is it sanitary? Um, Does it feel good? Does it feel weird? Do you get used to it? Do you like to do it? Do you like to do it too much? Like I I want, if you, if you use bidets, uh, let me know. And this guy told me he has a travel bidet. Which makes me think it is good. Because if you're like, I I need to travel with this. I mean, 
you must have to check that in a bag. I, there's no, are people just putting that through the scanner on the thing? Like, take out your laptop, take out your bidet, take off your shoes. And there's a guy just shoving his, anyway, let me know your thoughts on bidets. New mail notification. All right, I got some Jeffrey Dahmer stuff sent to me. I mean, that's very popular because of the series. Actually, one of my clips on TikTok is doing really well, the Jeffrey Dahmer clip. Um, all, all the stuff they sent me, we we learned in the in the show. So I don't want to like ruin the show for people. But um, one of the things they didn't talk about in the show was that Jeffrey Dahmer said he didn't eat people with tattoos because he said the ink made the flesh taste dot 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 off of course i don't even know what to do with that i don't even know what to do with that like of course i'm just gonna let that sit i'm just gonna jeffrey dahmer didn't need people with tattoos because he said the ink made the flesh taste off let's see if his full quote i just googled jeffrey dahmer tattoo taste first off you should get more tattoos then if if cannibals don't like it at least if you're at least if you get killed by one, they'll see all your tattoos and be like, I can't eat this guy. Or you're just going to be off the menu totally if uh, if if they're out scouting their next meal. See, that's where the guy with the face, ta- you got to get sleeve tattoos if you don't want to eat, because at least that'll be the turn. If you have a face tattoo, he's, he's like, this guy's covered every inch of his body. You've totally ruined the meat. See, the thing is, is a lot of it's in memes, so you can you never know if that's really true. Okay, here's a quote from Jeffrey Dahmer. I ate someone with a tattoo once. Once. The ink made the meat taste like shit. Eat garlic to avoid vampires. Get a tattoo to avoid cannibals. I don't know if he really said that. We have to uh, investigate that. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm actually going to Google Jeffrey Dahmer quotes. 25 top Jeffrey Dahmer quotes that are awfully harrowing. Is there a video of him saying this? See, I can't find any video of him saying it. I can't find any audio of this, so we're just going to take memes for what they are. It's out there enough where it could be true, so... uh, New mail. Weirder than that is uh, this girl right here. Uh, Someone sent me a picture of this girl who's got Ted Bundy tattoos and a Jeffrey Dahmer tattoo. And one says if you... The Jeffrey Dahmer tattoo says if you can't beat him, eat him. And I don't know. I can't really read what the uh, Ted Bundy one says. But could you imagine being the guy who pulls down this girl? Because they're, they're on her legs. So if you meet this girl and she's wearing pants and you pull them down and see two serial killers, do you spend the night? Now, looking at her. All right. We'll take away that she's a Boston fan. I probably... We wouldn't probably hit it off right away, but she's darn cute. So would I? Okay. All right. She's cute enough where I'd stay because of the Boston hat. And as she got undressed, would I stay if she was a, if she had serial killers tattooed on her legs? Yes, but I wouldn't be proud of it. I would take the risk. Because. Even though she's blonde, I do prefer brunettes, but her eyebrows are brown. So I think she's um, internally a brunette. Um, Listen, all right, I will. I shouldn't, but I will. But you're a crazy broad. You you don't marry girls like that. You don't you don't you don't uh, put a ring on it. You don't have babies with serial killer tattoo girls. Um, Yeah. I just, there is people that like, they, they like send love letters to, to inmates and serial killers. It, I guess it's just a fantasy. I, I just don't understand that type of fantasy. Like what, you know what it is? See a girl like that, that has a fantasy to be with serial killers. If we're going to like rate how good people are in bed. Like we always knew crazy people were the best in bed. Like girls tell me, you know, the guys that were like the meanest to them were like the best. Or, or like, I, cause I guess it's like the passion, this insane life you live just like builds passion. So they think they're the best. I think it's the same, same thing with girls, crazy girls better in bed girls with serial killer tattoos. They got to be hall of famers. So I think 99.9% of guys would be like, yes, 
I have to just test ride this and risk my life. New mail. Jeffrey Dahmer said the meat of his victim tastes like filet mignon. Well, of course he's going to say that. I mean, it must have tasted decent if he's still, if he, I mean, like who goes back for the second shitty meal? I mean, because he wasn't doing it to eat them. I think he was eating them out of curiosity and then just kept doing it because it probably did taste good. Um, what was this other fact that somebody sent me? I didn't know. Um, uh, somebody sent me this to murder his victims. Jeffrey Dahmer needed to drink alcohol because he didn't want to kill them. And in his exact words, it was just a means to an end. The fact, this fact caused the families of Dahmer victims to try and sue Budweiser. They claim that the company's advertisement played a vital role in Dahmer's alcoholism, which led to his crimes. That my friend is a stretch. (laughs) You're blaming Budweiser for okay all right we'll just say if you're blame okay you can blame blaming budweiser for alcoholism is not out of the realm of uh possibility because it's an alcohol company and this person's now addicted to alcohol and your advertisement but but there's a lot of alcoholics out there not eating people there's i mean i i would say the the vast majority of alcoholics out there have not cooked other people and I'm just, I didn't, I'm not Googling this. I didn't research this. I'm just saying based on feel, based on feel, um, most alcoholics don't lead to that type of crime. Or, because if it did, there's so many alcoholics out there that if alcohol did do that, Jeffrey Dahmer wouldn't even be popular. He'd be like a dime a dozen, be like, oh, what, you got drunk on Budweiser and eight people? Show me someone who hasn't. New mail notification. All right, I got sent some TikTok videos. Uh, These are fun. People find these TikTok videos with these kids giving weird facts and whatever. We'll see what happens. Blood curdling facts that you wish you never knew. In the 1960s, scientists attempted to teach dolphins English. However, the experiments were cut short when one of the scientists, Margaret Lafayette, was caught having sex with a dolphin named Peter. She even claimed that Peter initiated it, and after she left, he killed himself. I have to go back and investigate that one. I had a love affair with a dolphin named Peter who killed himself by drowning after we separated. So Margaret Howe and Peter the Dolphin lived together in the 1960s. So according to her, when they got separated by circumstances, you're a wacko. That's probably the only circumstance. Peter was left devastated. What does a devastated dolphin look like? He refused to breathe, sank to the bottom of his tank, and died in a case of widely acclaimed and widely claimed to be an act of suicide. So Margaret, me too, this dolphin. Is it this has to be the only dolphin me too story? Well, I guess it wouldn't be me too, just him him only? Because there was nobody before it, so it couldn't be a two. It'd be a me, me this only time. Hashtag. That's a long hashtag. Margaret and Peter first met in a bizarre NASA-funded experiment designed to teach dolphins to understand and potentially even mimic human speech. The purpose of the test was stranger still, with the long-time goal being to work out how humans could talk to aliens. Well, let's get to when she had sex with him. Okay. Okay, perhaps even Otter was the massive undertaking to create the Dolphin House, a sprawling complex flooded with water where Margaret and Peter would live together for 10 weeks. Margaret would spend all her time in the 22-inch deep seawater with Peter, apart from when she could climb onto a dry bed or desk which hung from the ceiling inside behind shower curtains. The couple were to live, sleep, wash, eat, and play together as they attempted to teach a dolphin one of the most intelligent animals on the planet had to speak through his blowhole. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bubba. Okay, let's get to the juicy stuff. However, between the dolphin and his human handler, the things became much more complicated than anyone could have predicted. Doesn't it always? Relationships just so complicated and unpredictable. His own vet described Peter as falling madly in love with Margaret. Okay, so the vet's a psycho, too. I mean, madly in love? We all know our pets love us, but I mean, like, you're saying madly in love is 
While the test was unsuccessful in getting a dolphin lore in English, it did offer an insight into the powerful emotions held by animals. I like how they're putting this on the animal so far. Margaret noticed by week four of the experiment, Peter had started to become sexually aroused around her and would be flirtatious, nibbling at her and rubbing against her legs. I mean, Peter got Peter the dolphin got some game. He's like, yo, Margie, yo, Margaret, Margie, baby. Let me come nibble on those legs. Maybe he just <laughs> see, maybe Margaret was that like hard up for some sex that maybe Peter was just thinking he saw some like food or something on her leg be like okay i guess some of that but she's like i think this dolphin's into me this dolphin's gone and peter and as peter's urges became more and more lusty the young researcher decided to start pleasuring the dolphin in a bid to keep him focused yeah that'll keep you focused so our dolphins like that they'd be like babe i want to learn english today yo teach yo uh mrs margaret um i'm having a hard time learning english can you uh, help me get focused, if you know what I mean? Well, folk, I can't believe that the dolphin had to get the poison out, like most men, to get focused. She denied this was sexual for her, but acknowledges it was for him, and instead describes the experience as sensuous. Listen, nobody does, I mean... You're you're masturbating a dolphin and you don't find this weird. It's not sexual for you. Margaret, however, did admit she formed a deep emotional bond with Peter. Then it's sexual for you. You don't have like if you were just a, like. This is not a medical practice. Like if I went to my doctor. And she said or he said no judgment. I need to do this to get you focused. I'd be like. I think you're taking advantage of me and I think you're getting something out of this. Because if a dolphin gets sexually aroused, he's got to know a way to release it. Or why not just bring in another dolphin to have sex with? Be like, you know, a little like dolphin brothel, you know, just go be like, all right, Peter, Peter's not focusing in class. Send in, uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a woman. Dolly Dolphin. Like Dolly Parton Dolphin. She's got big dolphin boobies. Come in, get Peter focused. Why do you have to do it? Why do you have to do it? Let's continue on. The relationship of having to be together sort of turned into really enjoying being together and wanting to be together and missing him when he wasn't there, she told a BBC documentary in 2014. Yo, lady, stop raping the dolphin and acting like you don't want to. It was just easier to incorporate that and let it happen. It was very precious. It was very gentle. Ew. Ew. Peter knew I was right there. Peter was right there. Again, it was sexual on his part. It was not sexual on mine. Sensuous, perhaps. Yeah, of course Peter was right there. Every every student, if they had an attractive teacher would be right there if that was part of the curriculum. Like, yo, did you do your book report today? I'm having a hard time focusing. Okay. Let's get it out of the way. Okay. Sensuous, perhaps. Whatever. Lady, you're... We- I mean, this is such an old story. I can't believe I'm talking about it, but somebody sent it to me. It would just become part of what was going on, like an itch. Like, get rid of that. Scratch it, and we'll be done and move on. Of Yeah. Yeah, welcome to a man's world. That itch is annoying. Peter was, however, utterly smitten with Margaret, and he would get jealous if she spoke to other humans and even lost interest in two other female dolphins. Well, yeah, I'm sure female dolphins are like, how can they compete with the hand of a human? Be like, I don't even have that. I don't even have that. It's different. He wanted strange. He wanted strange. He was sick of dolphin vag. He wanted strange, it, it, like I mean, like, like a more intelligent species is into you. Like, see, like, like if, like, like I gotta think of like a more intelligent species is into me. Like, there's like we're top of the food chain on Earth, so anything we try would be bestiality and gross. But if like an alien came, 
with like you know from star trek with like three or four breasts or maybe it didn't even look like a woman but you knew it was female and it was more intelligent of course i'd be smitten of course i would want that strange but like who has martian broads he took to sleeping just next to her suspended in bed the two would watch tv and he even started to form some human sounds in particular the word ball of course he did of course he knew how to say the word ball because he was like yo margie shut off the tv and touch my ball took to sleeping next to her they would watch tv if you're watching tv with a dolphin you're insane especially if you're feeling a bond i mean like at what point did you say i think we need to get a new dolphin because i i shouldn't be falling in love with it i mean how how far did you get peter along in the english speaking that you couldn't turn back however their bond became deeper and they established a workable relationship between human and dolphin the experiment's funding ran out and the dolphin's house had to close. Peter was shipped away from Margaret, being taken a thousand miles away to Dr. Lilly's other, much smaller lab in Florida. Within weeks, the seemingly heartbroken dolphin had died in an apparent act of suicide. He was kept in cramped conditions without his lover. I got this call from John Lilly. John called me himself, tell me he said Peter had committed suicide. The lab's vet, Andy Williamson, even attributed his death to a broken heart. He was ripped away from Margaret. Margaret could rationalize it, but when she left, could Peter? Here's the love of his life, gone. I can't believe this is real. These are, these are doctors. These are supposed to be like the smart people. And you're really like going along with this raping of a dolphin and you think he committed suicide? I think there's something up with Dr. Lilly. Maybe he's just a kid. He just killed. Maybe he liked Margaret, Dr. Lilly. And killed Peter for banging her first. Scientists are split over whether dolphins have the mental capacity to participate in suicide. You think? I think the real story is somebody caught Margaret jacking off a dolphin and said, we got to save the dolphin, send it to Lily. And then I think Margaret put a hit on Peter because she couldn't stand living without him you tell me a dolphin was so brokenhearted but margaret was fine though no, margaret was a psychopath she probably gave she she probably did something to peter before he got shipped off to make sure he died there sunk to the bottom of the ocean so he didn't want to live anymore get the hell out of here margaret is a creep margaret's a creep messages all right let's get some voicemails from who else robin hi joe it's robin um with a question this time um and hopefully um the other listeners can comment if they agree with me or not so the question is do you believe in god-given talent um such as in sports music whatever that there are certain people who are just destined to be great and no matter how much practice you take in your craft, let's say basketball, baseball, uh, singing, um, there's only so good you're going to get, and that's it. You can practice as much as you want, but there's only so good you're going to get. But there are people who were born with God-given talent, you say, like uh like, you know, the basketball players, like Jordan, I guess, and a couple others of them, and uh, Babe Ruth and those other ones, and singers, I guess. Well, I guess you would say Michael Jackson, even though, you know, he's had his idiosyncrasies, but are we going to see another one like that? And you know what I'm saying? Like, do you think you can just practice and practice and get better and better? Or do you just just get to a certain level and that's as good as you're going to be? Like you're never going to get better. And then some people are just born with greatness in them. And oh, I hope that makes sense. All right. Uh, bye, Joe. <laughs> Thank you, Robin, for another uh, great voicemail you always send uh uh that, that's actually a good one do you do i believe in god-given talent i not of course i mean i've met a lot of people in uh I, I remember actually i'll just speak about it for myself I remember like uh 
I mean, like God, when you talk about God given talent, like doesn't mean that you uh, you're going to be the greatest at it. But like, I think some people are born with certain qualities that make them pick things up really easy. Like I remember when I was like 15, I uh, yeah, I used to always try things like sports and stuff, and I always enjoyed it. But I like there was always those kids that like just they they were just good right out of the gate. Like they just had like. They just had it. They just had it. Um, whether they went on to greater things, probably not. But um, like I remember going over a friend's house. I think I was probably like 15. And he had like an electric guitar. And I used to watch my dad play guitar, but I never really did anything with it. But so genetically, my father did play guitar. So I remember picking up my friend's guitar and I just I just understood it. I just started jamming. I just I would learn really quickly. And I feel like it was almost like a God-given talent because I didn't really have to try that hard. Like, I understood it. Like, for some reason, I just innately understood the sound and how to, and then, like, I learned a, learned a few techniques. I got pretty good. And I always felt I was a good, really good guitar player. You know, people would tell me I was a good guitar player. I was playing in bands. Like, it was, like, something I'm like, man, I'm, I can really probably do something with this to the point where I, I actually, when I first started college, I went and took, you know, I was studying guitar, like jazz guitar. But then there was the people that were just insanely gifted. Like I remember in high school, there was this dude, Sam, I forget his last name, but you know, I was known as a good guitar player and he got a guitar for Christmas and he goes, Hey, would you give me some lessons? I'll pay you. So I think he paid me like 10 bucks an hour. You know, we'd come over to my house for like two hours for 20 bucks, which in the, you know, in the early nineties, decent pay. And um, I showed him like a few blues riffs and like a few blues scales, like basic guitar. And this dude, I am not joking. I'd say within three months, I, I need a guitar lessons from him. Like I opened whatever, whatever box in his brain. He just, I mean, he just came over my house and he's like, look, look what I learned. Just like like Eddie Van Halen. I'm not even joking. Like that's how good he was. He was insane. Um, I wish I could remember his last name. I wish I could look him up so I could see. I I I have to believe this dude's in bands. Um there's that book I always wanted to read called The Talent Code where they talk about it. And I I think there's a Okay, here's the thing. People can be born with a talent, but you also have to have a sort of obsession and work ethic to make that talent to be great. Because I've met talented people in music. I've met talented people in comedy. I've met talented actors, but they don't have the drive. You need, I think you need drive. You need hustle. Hustle and drive, I think, will take you further than God-given talent. Because I know a lot of people with God-given talent that just don't do it. Because I'll even put myself in that category. I felt I had a, a talent for comedy. Like, I mean, I've been making people laugh since I'm a little kid. I was always funny. I mean, most people, most comedians I know have that same story where they were like one of the funniest people in their group. Like people were not surprised and they became a comedian. But you got to work really hard at it. You can't, I mean, I'm sure there's some people that are funny that reach success without hard work, but I, it's got to be very few because it is a lot of hard work. And the hard work about it is, because the thing about, like sports, there's like a definitive, like if you work hard at it, like there's no, it's a numbers game. It's a, like you could see it. Like you, you can't fake talent in sports. Like Kobe Bryant, you read, he used to always be at practice like hours earlier shooting. So like when the rest of the team showed up, he was already on, like he had an obsession and this was already when he was great. And I'm sure he was like that to get great. But the thing is, when he got great, he kept up that work that made him great. And that's why he was an immortal basketball player. I believe the same thing for like Michael Jordan. Um, you know, even like Hall, like you look at like a guy like Derek Jeter. Now he, people always shit on Jeter. They're like, if he wasn't with the Yankees, he wouldn't be uh, what he is today. And I always say, listen, if Jeter was on the Yankees, he may not have the World Series rings that he has today. 
But he, I still think he'd be a Hall of Famer because I think his work ethic and his obsession with the game made him a good player. People are like he wasn't he wasn't the best shortstop. Okay, maybe he wasn't the best shortstop, but he if, if he had the best shortstop, he was the next guy. You know what I mean? And what he had was the intangible of winning. Because a lot of the best shortstops in the moment stink. And what I mean in the moment, in the playoffs, when it counts. That's a God-given talent. Possibly. See, I'm even questioning that. Like, is is confidence God-given? I think, I think some people are born with some crazy confidence. Because that's where mind falls apart. I um, I believe I have ability. Like, when I'm put in a situation... Like I, I, I believe I'm I'm pretty good at comedy. Like I'm a I'm a decent comedian. And as the years have gone by, I've gotten better even with dealing with bad situations. Cause sometimes you can really see how good a comedian is when it's not set up perfectly. I mean, most people can go into a packed theater with a hot crowd ready for a show and do well. But it's like like this past weekend where I had like ten people in the crowd. We had fun, but that's a chore. It's it's not the most fun, but my point is is um sometimes I feel that I could be better, but like my confidence has been the big struggle. So I believe I was given God given talent, but the the thing I really needed to nurture was the um was the confidence. And I didn't, for a lot of years, I ran from it because I just, it was just straight fear and anxiety. And as I got older, I started getting better with it. And um, I started realizing that um, maybe confidence isn't something you're born with. It's something you practice because I try to practice it now. Like I don't let, I don't let my head get the better of me. Don't get me wrong. I still get mad nervous. And still want to sabotage my life and just say, oh, fuck it. It's not meant for me. But like, I guess when you're thinking about God given talent, is it, is it like, um, that doesn't mean success. That doesn't mean success. In sports, it does. If you have God given talent, you nurture it, you'll get success. There's nobody, there's no great football player. There's no great baseball player, no great UFC fighter that's out there languishing, that's amazing, that nobody knows about. Uh, music and comedy the arts that could happen because it's so subjective what is good i mean you know how many times you know i've been told yo you got to go see this band they're amazing and to me they were a bore fest or like you'll see who's hot in comedy and and you go watch it and you're like they're good but i don't know what the hoopla is so trying to get to whatever, whatever my dumb point was. I'm hoping I'm answering your question. I'm totally just trying to figure this out in real time. It's not something I, I continually think about. But um, I think, I believe everyone's got a God-given talent. And that, like, you, I, it's probably, like, there's funny people. I'll, I'll speak for myself. There's been funny people in my family. So I think genetically there's a funny thing. Like, my family's funny. My brothers are very funny. My father was funny. My mother's fun. Everyone's funny in their way. But what they're all shocked with me is I have the ability to go on stage. I have this, this um, mental illness, I tell them. Like, you guys, it's, it's normal for you not to be on stage. It's a mental illness for me to uh, feel the need to get approval from strangers. But I do love it. It's like I, sometimes people say that it's just you need approval from strangers. Listen, we all want approval from strangers, but I do love it. Like I, I was even telling somebody the other day, I'm like, I think I was talking with uh, one of the other comics, Angela Sharp, who, by the way, go Google her. Very funny musical comedy. She's one of my favorites that I discovered in the past year or so. Um, but like we're sitting there, we're doing this show for like 10, 12 people. And I'm like, it's just, it's just so fun. Like even when it sucks, it's good. Like even when it's because like you're sitting there, it's I just love doing it. Will I find ultimate success with this? I don't know, but I do have a talent for it. People continue to book me over and over again. So there is a talent there. It doesn't mean I'll reach the top. If I work harder, will I? Yeah, that's what. So I think it's mostly about hard work. Could I have worked harder in my career? Absolutely. 
you you have to sacrifice. That's you know to be great, you have to sacrifice. And whether whatever it was, whether it was my lack of uh, of uh, feeling good about myself, confidence, I I didn't sacrifice as much as others. Um, I'm hoping when everything's all said and done, I'm happy with the choices I made because I sometimes feel though chasing success could be a depressing venture. Like uh, I I felt myself sometimes on like a rat wheel, like you know wanting um, wanting the end goal to show itself. But what I've learned as I aged is that um, when it comes to creativity, see like athletes have a, have a finite time they could perform properly. So they got to really nail it into like this period, of, you know, like usually before 40, you know, some guys that last till 40, but like comedians and performers, sometimes you don't, you, you could, it could take till 40 to be good at your craft. You know what I mean? Um, I think, you know, what's that? The thousand hours people put in. So hard work, Hard work is better than talent because I'm telling, I know I, I know, I'm telling you, dude, I knew talented comedians, like even in the open mic days, you're like, this dude is funny, but they just didn't want to put into work because it's a lot of work and it's a lot of pain. It's a lot of failing. Um, so yeah, I do believe in God given talent, but I believe more in hard work and hustle because I've seen more comedians get funnier and get success with hustle more than God-given talent. I know a lot of talented people that aren't in the business anymore. All good things must come to an end. All right, guys, so that's another episode of Daydream Legend. Didn't get to all the messages, didn't get to all the uh, videos sent to me, but um, but I thought it was a, a fun episode. Please subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Joe Fernandez if you're listening on the audio end, and vice versa, go back if you're on the video end, go subscribe to the audio end. Uh, if you want to leave me a voicemail for the future, like I said, you can uh, call 973-908-8477. You can leave a comment on a YouTube video. You can shoot me an email at joefernandez.net. Also, I have a bunch of stand-up dates coming up that are posted there. I have a few more that came in yesterday that I'll be putting up for next year. And I'm very happy that comedy is starting to come back with a regular, in a regular way into my life. So, uh, Try and help me get some more subscribers. Tell your friends about it. Um, I appreciate all your support, and I'll see you guys next week.